Welcome to this video review about a Vortex Diamondback Tactical FFP scope. Uh, I'm going to review the 4 to 16 by 44 rifle scope. Uh, we already have a 6 to 24 by 50 uh, rifle scope, which is also in the same series um, shown on uh, on our YouTube channel. So you can check that review already. So this is the entry level tactical FFP scope made by Vortex. As you probably have seen or known, th there were other Diamondback tactical scopes before them. I think in 2016 there were 3 to 9 by 40 and 4 to 12 by 40. Two scopes, one inch tube with tactical turrets uh, put on the market. But in 2018 at SHOT Show Vortex came out with this uh, 6 to 24 by 50 and this particular uh, uh, 4 to 16 by 44 um, down back tactical scopes. Um, as you have probably seen on the market, there was a huge crowd in this entry level tactical FFP scopes. It started some years ago uh, and now everybody's in it. And Vortex also normally uh, they gave their alternative to the market. Uh, there was no real successor, uh, uh, no real predecessor of this scope uh, because Vortex, uh, Vortex cheapest scope, um, which was FFP and which had a matched retic reticle with the, with the clicks, uh, before that scope was the Viper PST. But now this came one tier below Viper PST. It features no illumination, but apart from that, it has a 30 mm tube, tactical turrets, parallax adjustment, um, normally a fast focus on the eyepiece, a metal magnification ring, and if you check the design, you see it's really typical Vortex with all this, um, especially if you check the magnification uh, ring it's it's really you could see it even if there will be no markings that this is a, a vortex scope this particular model is meant for medium range so 4 to 16 and ever since the second generation of, uh, of Viper PSTs uh, these scopes at least in vortex lineup they come with a 44 millimeter objective lens because the first generation of Viper PST used to feature 50 millimeter objective lens now they switched all their scopes in, in um, also their Strike Eagle scopes uh, of 3 to 18, I think, and this 4 to 16 and 3 to 15 um, Viper PST Gen 2, they're all with a 44 millimeter objective lens. I think this is the reason for it is that a lot of these um, scopes uh, are mounted in the US on, on flat Picatinny tops. You can see it also on, on a on the box, you see the flat Picatinny, like on an AR rifle, which this is an AR rifle. Uh, so 50 millimeter objective lens gives you a lot less space between the flat top and the, the scope. So this is the reason why they went to 44, I think. Um, here in Europe, I, I would say that a lot of customer, customers will still prefer 50 millimeter objective lens on, on scopes like this. Uh, this particular scope is made in China, like normally for its price point of around 450 euros, it's also understandable. Uh, it does come with a Vortex VIP warranty, which is really, really important. And I think that many of you followers of our YouTube channel know that um, Vortex VIP warranty is one of the best in the industry. Mm. So if I do a short summary, the scope is really modern. It's light and with an FFP mil mil configuration. You can also buy it in MOA, MOA configuration for the American market. Those are not that, that popular in the, in the EU because Europeans, we use mils um, mostly. Uh, well, in this, in this price class, uh, it's, it's quite modern because it's, it's a new trend. Uh, it's rated for any caliber, so also on three, 300 Win Mac you could use it. It's filled with nitrogen and it's 30 centimeters long, 30 millimeter tube, uh, roughly 650 grams of weight. So it's still quite compact and it's not really heavy. Um, in Europe, where 
unlimited VIP warranty still needs to be uh, defined in, in years, I would say that the warranty is definitely more than 10 years long, uh, maybe even 30, who knows, but more than 10, definitely. Uh, it's a compact modern light scope. If I go to the reticle, the reticle is in the first focal plane and here it's where it becomes uh, really interesting because you get the Vortex designed uh, EBR2C reticle. You can see the reticle here. And this is where the Vortex know-how really excels. I think uh, majority of similar scopes of, uh, of a similar price class don't feature a reticle which would be equally usable than the Vortex reticle. Um, you also get all the ranging formulas and so on inside uh, and you can see it here the reticle it's really usable and it's really really nice so uh, I think this is one of the main unique selling points of this rifle scope uh, it's only one reticle that is available but normally one style of the reticle but you're able to choose it either in MOAs or mills and then you get matched clicks also if you have a uh, reticle in MOAs, then you get uh, the turrets, which are which clicks are in MOAs, or the other way around, like this scope here, mill sub reticle subtensions and mill clicks. Uh, you also get a product manual where everything is shown, how can it be done. Uh, you can also see how to how to change the turrets to get the zero stop and so on. Um, all in all, you get all the information on how to zero it and, and everything else. Um, the reticle is normally non-illuminated, which is a bit odd because even other competitors in this class, they do offer reticle illumination, but it's usually not of great use because uh, for 450 euros, it's impossible to get a really good illumination. So I would say that Vortex probably decided not to offer reticle illumination instead of offering an illumination which is not really usable, like many other competitors do. With the scope, you also get the sunshade, a cleaning cloth, and the bikini scope covers made out of rubber. That's smart, because all of those plastic bikini covers, uh, uh, which you find also on more expensive scopes, are, uh, I would say the quality of these rubber ones is much better, and the feel and the ease of use, it's, it's much better on these rubber ones. So I hope that everybody will switch to, to rubber bikini lens covers. If you go back to the turrets, the turrets are, if you look at the styling, they are designed really, really similar to, to the first Diamondback tactical turrets, and if you go a little bit way back, similar in design only, the looks only, I would say, to, to turrets found on the Viper Gen 2 scopes. Uh, distinctively Vortex. So, very nice turrets. They're also nicely audible. A little bit mushy, but again, this is a scope for less than 500 euros. Still, the clicks can be felt, each click can be felt really nicely. Uh, and they are audible, so for this price class, more than good enough. Uh, six mils of travel per one revolution, multi-turn turrets without any turn indicator, unfortunately. And normally it would be much better if there would be 10 mils of travel on, on a turret. But honestly speaking, on a turret in this price class, 500 euros or less, if you would have 10 mils of, of travel, then you wouldn't feel each click as nicely as here. So uh, it can be understandable why they decided to, to use six mils um, of travel. Uh, the parallax goes from all the way from 20 yards or even a little bit below, 15 meters, to infinity and has a nice long travel. Even if you look how much travel you get from 20 yards to let's say 100 yards, you can see that this scope could be used also on um, on air rifles or small caliber rifles because it's really precise on, on close range. And then it goes all the way to infinity. Uh, the travel of the parallax is also consistent. And again, if considered this is a less than 500 euros um, priced scope, it's, it's really good. 
Uh, the total elevation in the turrets is uh, almost 25 mils, 24.7, really a lot. Normally the higher the magnification goes, the smaller elevation range. Um, and the turrets are resettable to zero, even though they don't have a hard mechanical zero stop. I, at least I think they don't. If I made a mistake, I apologize. Um, the magnification range, 4 to 16, classical 4 times zoom, 44, 44 millimeter objective lens, 8.2 8 uh, meters of field of view at 100 meters. Not the best, but still the tunnel effect, if you look through the, the scope itself, it will be hard here to see. Um, it's not really that visible, even though you see that the field of view is not uh, on the same level as with more expensive scopes. Especially if you compare this scope with uh, one uh, step higher Viper Gen 2 scopes, it's, uh, it's really hard to compare. Normally, the price difference is more than twice, so it's understandable. Uh, the eye box is acceptable, it's not exceptional, but still it's in average. And all in all, the optical qualities are more than decent for this price range. Uh, when we review the scopes and when we test the scopes, what I see with this Vortex scopes and on all levels, that uh, they offer really a lot of value for the money. But you can still see clear distinctions between, let's say, Diamondback Tactical FFP and the Viper Gen 2 FFP and then the Razer Gen 2. You see the difference. Uh, it's noticeable immediately. And that's also the right thing. So you know what you get for 500 euros, you know what you get for 1000 euros, and you know what you get for 2500 euros. Um, if I do a short summary about this scope, what I like, like with all the reviews, what I like and what I think uh, could have been done better, where is still room for improvement. I would say the build quality is really good on this scope and the value for money is really good. I like the turrets, the design and the click, uh, even though you have probably seen that the clicks are a little bit mushy, but still when it clicks, you feel that you made the click. So you wouldn't do a click and you're not sure if you made two or three. Also, the, uh, the clicks are audible. The price point, you get very decent optics and a good package and unbeatable warranty terms for uh, an affordable price, less than 450 euros at the moment. It depends normally how the dollar, US dollar and euro, how they behave. Um, I also think that the weight, the scope is not too heavy, even though for a 44 millimeter objective scope and 4 to 16, I think it could have been a little bit lighter and I also think it could have been a little bit shorter because with uh, with 36 centimeters of length, this scope is not really short. So I would prefer if, if the scope would be at least two, three, maybe even four centimeters shorter. I am sure that it's possible to be done. And um, I think maybe this is the room for improvement. I also think that it comes into a, into a price class where there's really a lot of competitors, all the way from Primary Arms, Nikon, Bushnell, uh, many others. Uh, and lacking the illumination on the rectical is um, a little bit questionable, even though I completely understand that Vortex probably decide, let's do better optical performance, let's do better field of view, better uh, build quality, and let's sacrifice the illumination, which on most of the competitors in this price range is not really usable. But when you look at the data sheet, you have one additional um, mark in the, in the box. So uh, myself personally, I prefer to get better optics and better quality instead of, of uh, illumination, which is not really uh, that well done. But we know that people would rather see that the scope has all the features possible. Mm. Okay, I also think that if they could make it shorter and lighter, it would be a perfect choice, uh, even better than now. Um, still, good value for money and really, really good reticle design and normally unbeatable, unbeatable warranty. So a good reticle, good value for money and unbeatable quality. 
Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video review, please check our other video reviews. Also check maybe if you like this this scope, check the Strike Fire Tactical uh, Strike Eagle. No, yeah, Strike Eagle Tactical scopes made by Vortex. Very similar, but second focal plane. You normally a lot less usable, but with a with a bigger zoom ratio. And normally check the Viper PS2 Gen 2 um, rifle scope reviews. Uh, if you like the channel, please also subscribe. Thank you for watching and bye.